Hello, everybody. My name is David Giglio. I thank you for remembering the pronunciation. It's a tough one. So some of you are probably yet wondering who I am. You know, this is the second time I've run for Congress. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I, I was a former high school history teacher. I'm a small business owner. I consider myself just an ordinary person. And, and I think that what is going to save this country is extraordinary effort from ordinary people like me. You know, I knocked on thousands of doors my, myself when, when I ran last time for Congress. And one of the common themes from people is that they have lost, there's a crisis of confidence in our country with our leaders and our government. People have lost faith in our leaders and our country and the way it's run. And it's more than Democrat versus Republican. And what's coming up, I believe, being in the classroom and seeing what's going on in our schools, 2024 is shaping up to be one of the most consequential elections in our lifetime, okay? This is our moment to chart a, his, a new course, a historic path for our country, okay? I believe President Trump's gonna win next year. I believe America's best days are still ahead of us, but nothing's guaranteed. We have to be willing to fight for it. You know, the, the radical left is more emboldened than ever before. I think we've seen it on a scale that we never thought imagined over the last couple of years. And these are people that when you give them an inch, they take a mile. And we can't be willing to settle anymore for this is the best we can do. You know, I entered this race even before it was an open seat. And that's because I believe now we need radical change. I'm not funded by any of the big donors, by any of the people. I've never been in politics before. I've never been doing this for them. I'm doing this for my, my son who's one and a half years old. I'm doing it for the kids in the classroom who quite frankly, we were pushing through. We were failing them by just pushing them through and they couldn't read and write and do math, setting them up for failure. I'm doing it for the people whose doors I knocked on that said, hey, I've lost faith in everything. What does it matter if I vote for a Democrat or Republican? Nothing's changing, okay? That is how you lose a country when you have that. We have to be willing to fight the radical left with the same tenacity that they're fighting with to destroy it. We have to be willing to fight to save it with the same tenacity they're fighting with to destroy it. You know, our borders are being overrun. It's a disaster. It's leading to crime. I sat in a room and had a woman cry to me in fireball the last time I ran. She was speaking Spanish. We spoke through a translator. She told me they're dropping people off in our communities. Our kids are getting into crime and nobody's here um, helping us. And she was telling me, thank you just for being here. Nobody ever comes to talk to us. And so I ran again for her because I owed it to her to deliver the change that I'm promising. Our economy is in turmoil. I'm in retail. And I can tell you, no matter what they tell you with those jobs numbers and all this stuff, the economy is not the best it's been because my store has been the slowest it's been in three years in the last six months. People are spending every dollar they have just to survive. My wife and I, my wife has a great job. She's a nurse practitioner. We're spending every dollar that we have to survive. You go to Walmart now to buy groceries and you're like, what the heck did I just buy and spend $200 on? The world's descending into conflict and chaos. It's not the time to back down. We cannot settle for this is the best we can do. You know, I've never heard Nancy Pelosi go to Democrats and tell them, well, voters, you guys gotta settle for this. This is the best deal I have. No, she went for the juggler and got everything she wanted all the time. And we're constantly being told, this is the best deal we can get. You guys gotta take it. One side is scoring touchdowns. We're kicking field goals. Eventually the game's gonna be over. So I believe what I offer that nobody else really offers here is I am an outsider. You know, there's probably a lot of people that are, are mad that I'm back here doing this again um, because I kind of say what I want to say and do it because I've never done it for anybody else. You know, I, I, I decided to get into politics after everything that happened with COVID where I can count on the, my, my fingers on my hand how many people, elected leaders from both sides, any side, stood up and did anything. My, my uncle, he dropped dead mowing a lady's lawn for free. He used to do it for retirees. I flew back home to bury him and they told us you can't have a funeral, you can't have a wake. And then I turned on the television and I saw 10,000, thousands of people in the streets in cities across the country and that was okay. But I couldn't bury a guy who was like a second father to me. I'm a small business owner. Business owners were told your business isn't essential. You can't be open. How many small businesses have failed? And nobody's ever said anything. Nobody's ever apologized for any of that and been held accountable. I'm not going there for the status quo. My biggest priority when I get to Washington isn't getting reelected. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm tired of the status quo. I want to deliver results. I don't want to go and tell my constituents this is the best I can do. I want them to never settle for less because we shouldn't have to settle for less. We have to demand more of the people who represent us. If we keep settling, we are going to lose this country. That is what's at stake. 
I'm never going to vote for amnesty. I want to secure law. I want to stand with President Trump when he begins the biggest deportation operation in history. Okay, we have laws. We're telling people that we can't pick and choose which laws we want to follow. Everybody keeps saying it's not above the law. We can't keep picking and choosing laws. I'm never going to vote for continued resolutions or the debt ceiling because enough is enough. Okay, no more debt. We spent, we're $34 trillion in debt. Okay, amnesty would cost us $4 trillion more. I'm never going to vote for funding the FBI until there's radical changes. We have a weaponized government that is targeting the American people for just having differing opinions, for having things like MAGA or Trump in your bank accounts. I'm not gonna vote for that until things are changed. Okay, I'm not gonna vote for more endless wars. I'm tired of that stuff. We cannot be spending trillions of dollars, billions of dollars fighting wars overseas when our infrastructure is crumbling, our people are barely struggling to get by. We need to invest in America. That's what America First is about. It's common sense. It should be not Democrat or Republican at all. It should be common sense. Your job as an elected representative is to put the American people first. Those are the people who elected you. Those are the people whose tax dollars you're spending. Okay, so I believe in spending wisely, not lavishly. We can invest in our families and our small businesses by stop spending on for, um, endless wars and all this foreign aid. We can do things like tax breaks for working families, giving child tax or doubling the current child tax credit. I believe that no active service military men should pay federal income taxes. And I believe that no combat veteran up to the 24 percentile should pay income taxes. Because that's the least we can do. And we can do all this stuff by cutting wasteful spending. So. What I believe I offer is anyone else, my, my thing, I've never done this to be a politician. It's always cliche to say, to say, but I mean it. You know, I want to go there and I want to deliver results. And I believe I'm only interested in doing that. So I hope I can have your vote and I hope I can earn your support. Thank you. God bless you. And, you know, let's make America great again. Woo!